Hello and welcome to the CTM News Break, where we keep you up to date on what's happening right here in town. I'm Diane Sherritt Steimel. A local family is hoping that you'll help build Junie's Place at Friendship Park in honor of their daughter. On December 30th of 2022, I lost my daughter Junie um, at the age of two and a half unexpectedly. In order to honor her legacy and keep her memory alive, we wanted to spread spread Junie's happiness to others and so we decided to partner with the town of Chelmsford and the Friends of Roberts Field um, and create Junie's Place. So it'll be in addition to Friendship Park which is one of Junie's favorite places and so it just felt like the right place to do something to honor her. So we will be putting in an addition that is um, accessible for all with port and place surfacing and it will be designed specifically for two to five year olds. It will have um, some really fun elements including a, what they call as a wee saw. So it's a large seesaw that houses a, a more than just two friends. Things that really we want friends to be able to enjoy for many, many years to come in honor of Junie. And so we're seeking $145,000 in donations. We kicked off the fundraiser on Junie's what would have been her third birthday, which was April 2nd. We're planning to do so until um, January of 2024 with a hopeful installation date and opening in the summer of 2024. We have a website, it's juniesplace.org that people can go and they can get more information. And so that's a place to donate as well as we've got some flyers that are around Friendship Park. We will be putting up some yard signs as well and they have QR codes that you're able to scan that'll bring you directly to the PayPal page as well. Librarians are on the front lines of a fight over what some view as censorship. We checked in at the Chelmsford Library. I'd say it's very important to keep in mind that this is a very small group of people who are trying to enact these book bans and challenge the process that librarians use to create our collections. And so a lot of that comes through in seeing the vast majority of the people in our community saying, we really like these books, we really want these books on the shelves. It's important to see different viewpoints in order to understand what people are going through. That's what gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. We read, read the articles, um, because that's a very high interest and because mm -hmm. there are some loud voices. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we're not hearing about everything else, all the people who come to the library mm -hmm. every single day mm -hmm. who are grateful for mm -hmm. what they're able to mm -hmm. access here. People can say, I don't want to read this, or like, even I don't want my children to read this. But you shouldn't be able to say they can't read it or other people's children can't read it. And that's what these challenges or bans, taking books on the shelf, would do. And so People have different beliefs and are coming um, from different places. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for us always to know what's happening in our communities, what, mm -hmm. um, what others are thinking, and in which ways it might have a negative impact. Mm -hmm. If books are being removed or aren't accessible anymore, that could have a negative impact on a lot of people in our community. Mm -hmm. And we have to pay attention to that um, mm -hmm. and protect those rights for people. Mm -hmm. The future of our local trees is looking bleak as an invasive beetle has destroyed tens of millions of ash trees. That item right there is the insect inside the hole. It's called the emerald ash borer because of its color. Tree behind me, I found one sticking its head out. It's all over the East Coast. The trees here in Chelmsford are just starting to die. There does not seem to be any genetic resistance at this time that's noted. So unless the trees are treated, we're probably gonna lose all the American ash. And you can re actually reach out and feel it. There's a slight indentation, and that's where the insect, or the larva, was feeding on the xylem. So it can take three, four, five years for a tree to be completely killed. If they have a really nice ash tree, they should call up a reputable tree company and then probably every year they're going to have to have it injected. You don't wait until the tree gets sick. You inject it before you think you have a problem. Thanks for watching the CTM News Break brought to you by Chelmsford Telemedia. If you have news we can use, contact us at chelmsfordtv.org. I'm Diane Sherrod-Stonnell.